Along with her, we have a man who's a film director and producer, but you will know him best as a great screen star for movies like Matilda and One Flew Over a Cuckoo's Nest. And there's a double bill I'd like to show the kids. <laughs> so many more great films. It's Danny DeVito. <laughs> Danny DeVito. Look at that. Look at that. That's charisma right there. Being waited on hand and foot. In the last couple of years, my next guest has won so many awards she's had to buy herself a bigger mantelpiece. She's the star of Mrs Biggs and, of course, she was fabulous in Scylla. It's the BAFTA, NTA and Olivier award-winning Sheridan Smith OBE. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Danny is on fire tonight, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> uh, now, tomorrow is, of course, Remembrance Sunday, and in a related story, number 10 has been called Photoshopping a picture of David Cameron for the official Facebook page. I don't know if any of you saw this, uh, but you can probably spot the difference, cos here's how he normally looks, and this was the picture they had up on the page, and then people pointed out that he didn't have a poppy on, so they photoshopped the picture, and suddenly this appeared. <laughs> OK, that's what they did. <laughs> uh, and it's strange their Facebook team made that mistake, because Poppy Day happens at the same time every year. So you'd have thought they'd have known in advance. I imagine they've already got the picture ready for Christmas. I think they're going to go with that one. So <laughs> Although I'm a bit worried what they might do when it's Gay Pride Week. <laughs> and I can only hope they've got the right picture for the Notting Hill Carnival. Because, you see, if they... <laughs> no, because if they did that, that would be wrong. OK, well, let's get my first guest out. She's a British screen icon with a career stretching over an amazing 60 years. It is the effortlessly sophisticated, the ever-intriguing, the always beautiful Dame Joan Collins, ladies and gentlemen. That's a great response. How lovely. I just realised I've probably committed a terrible faux part already, cos I said Dame Joan Collins, but Collins is no longer your second name, of course. Uh, Gibson, but I am Dame Joan Collins, because that's the way that they gave it to me. But I, I'm either Dame Joan or I'm Mrs Gibson. I'm not Miss Collins anymore. Now, you were made a Dame uh, comparatively recently. March. Now, how is that experience? What do they do uh, for, the, for the Dame Hood ceremony? Oh, well, that is quite amazing because, um, first of all, you have to be at Buckingham Palace at 9.30 in the morning with... I took Percy and my two eldest children. Now, Percy Tara is your had, husband, we should yes, point out, because you don't know. Yes, Percy is my husband. And um, Tara and Sasha, and then we go to uh, Buckingham Palace, which, even if you've been there before, which I'm sure you have, is quite amazing. You go into a special room with all of the other people that are being damed and served and whatever, and um, Prince Charles was there, and he pins on the, um, the, the, the insignia. But he doesn't pin it, it's got a, a sticky thing on, so he just <laughs> goes like that, Slaps and, it it's, and it's on your, on your jacket. And um, he was very nice to me. And what does he say? Did he say that he liked a particular piece of work by you, or did he just say, nice to see you again, or did he, he say... He said... About time too. Wow. Which I thought was rather fabulous. I think you fully deserved it, and I, I oh. know we're glad she's a dame, aren't we, ladies and gentlemen? I think it's a wonderful thing. And I can't think of anyone who deserves it more. I, I love the fact you're a dame. Thank you. Now you have uh, three children. Yes. And they have created three grandchildren for you. Yes. Do you get together at Christmas? Are you going to have a big family Christmas we together? We are going to have a big family Christmas with, um, yes, of the whole family. In fact, we're all coming over to London. And um, that's my brother and Jackie's children and Jackie's grandchildren and my children, and so it's going to be massive. There's a lot of us. Now, you're, I'm sure you might be godmother to more than one person, but I know that you're godmother to Cara Delevingne. I am godmother. She's one of my 12 godchildren. Yes, she is adorable, but she also has actually she's got 16 godparents. Yeah. 16 godparents? I know. I've never heard of that, actually. Have you? They, they must have thought you're all going to be a bit flaky if they went yeah. for 16. <laughs> Is there, is there rivalry between this, this huge posse of godparents? Well, no, but we do discuss her sometimes. <laughs> there is one, one godmother who's quite famous, and um, there was a period of time when we were a little bit concerned about Cara. Yeah. Uh, the white powder that dropped, okay. you know, that would be a little worried. Yeah. And so um, I, I talked to her about it. She said, oh, you know, that, don't worry about that. But she's a lovely girl, and um, I'm very fond of her. 
And she's, I mean, she's an amazing actress. But that's amazing lovely. Amazing that, actress. That's lovely that she has you looking out for her and that you're not, uh, you don't feel that you shouldn't talk to her about things like that when you see something when there's you know, obvious temptations and people might, that you, that you feel that you can take her to one side and say, stop well, doing that. Yeah, I, I did this on the telephone. But we used to, I mean, since she was about 14, well, maybe 12, um, she used to have her birthday party all the time at the um, wonderful uh, bar in uh, Saint-Tropez called the Voile Rouge, which is the most decadent, wonderful, ridiculous place in the world. It's unfortunately now closed. And um, Cara and her sisters, Poppy and Chloe, used to dance on the tables. We all, I never danced on the tables, but we did dance in between the tables while various oligarchs were shaking up the champagne and, and spraying it all over everybody. Yeah, it sounds like a fun night out. No, but it's daytime, darling. Well, that sounds yes. like a really <laughs> fun day out, It's then. like three o'clock or four o'clock. But yes. I get the thing, you probably don't drink that much anymore. Do you still drink? Do you still oh, like... Oh, God, yes. Oh, OK. <laughs> <laughs> yes, last night we were out. We had a celebration dinner for my book, and then um, we went down to a disco... And I said discotheque, and somebody said, that's awfully old-fashioned to call it a discotheque. I think I we said, should start calling it discotheque again. Discotheque yeah. sounds so much nicer. And they uh, had a bit of wine, but not champagne. I don't like champagne. Everybody thinks I like champagne because my character in Dynasty Dynasty uh, drank champagne, and I don't like it. Are you, you're still acting. You do still appear in things, don't oh, you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just finished um, a uh, cameo in the Ab Fab movie in the south of France. Wow which was great. And then I've got... Um, I'm coming out... I'm singing this year in Benidorm, which I love Benidorm. Do you guys love Benidorm? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We had Johnny brilliant. Vegas on a while ago. Oh, my God. And he was talking about working with that scene. And what a great... Who would have thought you would be a screen pairing with, with <laughs> Johnny Vegas, having yes. a bedroom scene with Johnny Vegas? I know. Well, it was hardly a bedroom scene. But I have to say, I've never been so shocked as when we did rehearsals, he kept his clothes on. But when we did the scene where I come in, because I'm meeting the handsome waiter yeah. as an assignation, and um, he was in bed, and he was eat eating a big chocolate bar, and he'd taken off his clothes, and so my reaction when I saw him was really kind of... <laughs> what? <laughs> and it was totally non-acting. So he was, he was standing there completely naked? He was lying in the bed completely wow. naked. Wow. Yes, yes, with wow. a tiny little sheet. Yeah. Did you... <laughs> that tiny. <laughs> what about Dynasty? What about Dynasty? Because that, that changed your life, really, didn't you? I mean, who, who expected that to be as big a hit and to have the impact it did? Never. When I went out, you know that I was, like, third choice or fourth choice for this role? I didn't know that. Yeah, they wanted Elizabeth Taylor, they wanted Sophia Loren, and they wanted another actress that I can't remember who her name was. Uh, but Aaron Spelling, um, he really wanted me, he really pushed for me. And the rest of, you know, the ABC people and all the rest of the suits, they didn't want me. But Aaron got me. And so when my agent called me and said, um, you know, they want you for Dynasty, Dynasty, I said, what's that? I mean, I don't know, is it a Chinese restaurant? What is it? <laughs> <laughs> it was unheard of in England. And it was not doing well in the, um, in the ratings. So he said, well, you know, this will be a nice part. He sent me some sides. I looked at the sides. I thought, yeah, these are fun. You know, this could be funny. And um, I thought, I'll go out. It'll be like a six-month gig. Well, nine years later, wow. nine years later, I, having been on the cover of, like, 400 magaz magazines, apart from everything else, you know, it came to an end, which was rather sad. It was sad because I enjoyed it a lot. You did... There was a lot of action involved in that. If you look back... There was at it a now, lot of were, action. Let's... I'd like to uh, remind everyone of you in Action in Dynasty because it, it's so kind of of the time and yet it's so much fun. I wish there was something like it on there because there isn't really anything like that, is there? That kind of level of fun melodrama. No, there isn't, actually. No. Well, is there? No, well, there's reality shows like yeah. the Beverly Hills Housewives and things like that, but it's not the same, no. OK, so this is Joan Collins back in The Fabulous Dynasty.
Um, now, I am uh, amazed by your snapping technique there. Uh, a lot went on. I always wanted to ask you this. Would you, can I be part of the dynasty experience? Would you slap me? Well, you really want me to? Okay, well, you know, it's done in a certain way. Oh, is it? So, yeah. <laughs> okay, you have to get a little closer. Okay, okay, okay. I'll, I'll... All right. Okay. How dare you! <laughs> oh, I see, so you get that. Okay. Didn't even make contact. Did that look... Did, did that look, look right? convincing? <laughs> okay, let's do it again, and this time... Get closer, get closer. Okay. Okay. You are horrible! Oh. That's better. That's better. That's better. That's very good. Wow. I didn't want to hit you with my nails. No, I didn't want you to hit me with the big ring on there. That's oh. what would have taken the tooth out. Uh, <laughs> in a way, in a way, I think, um, the way you're looking at the way you're crewing, would it be right to think that, that Jackie, your sister, who so sadly died this year, and I know we'll talk a little about that, but in a way, she, she was responsible for you getting the dynasty part, in, in an indirect way? Indirectly, yes, because she wrote this book called, um, called The Stud in 1978 or 79, and it was wonderful. I mean, the stud was great. I mean, it was right about the time of Saturday Night Fever and all those discotheque uh, movies. And so that was the kind of precursor of Alexis. It was rather like Alexis. And so apparently um, Aaron Spelling saw the, saw the stud and, um, and I met him at a party in L.A., saw him around, and uh, that's when he thought of me. So, so yeah. it was uh, via the park. Yes, it was. It was certainly via, yeah, certainly via Jacket, yeah. Uh, I, like, everyone was so sad to hear the news this year, uh, uh, and I saw you briefly afterwards, and I know mm -hmm. you've spoken about it. Um, but she, she hadn't told you that she was ill, had she? She'd kept that from you for, for quite a while. She kept it from uh, most of her family. She kept it from our brother, who lives in England, um, and um, she only told her three daughters. She didn't want anybody to know. She didn't want pity, and she wanted to carry on just as she always had. So since she found out that she had got it, uh, she wrote five books, you know, five books in seven years. She went to Australia twice. She went to New York three times. She came over to London for my investiture in March. Um, she came over to uh, London again Nine days before she died, she did uh, Loose Women, and um, she was phenomenal, phenomenal woman. Really amazing, amazing, amazing. Yeah. That is incredible. And so when you tell us what she achieved after being told that, because she knew, I think, seven years before, Yes. That she would, she would definitely die of cancer, and it was... Well, all she the didn't time. know. She, she, she told me, when she called us about three weeks before, she told me that um, she had it, but that she was fighting it, and she had been taking treatment, and we planned going to Hawaii for Christmas with all of our various children and grandchildren. And uh, so it was quite a blow. Quite a blow. I'm still suffering. Difficult for me to talk about, really. Do you... I mean, I think you can understand why she didn't tell you at the same time. Was there a part of you that thought, I wish you'd told me earlier? I don't know, Jonathan. You know, I'm still... Uh, you know, it's a process. I'm still uh, thinking about the whole thing. I find it very hard to actually realise it. The fact that she lived in L.A. and I was in Europe most of the time um, means that when I do think about it, I think, oh, she's in L.A. You know, I'll see her soon. Uh, I, I still haven't processed it totally, and I think that grief, you know, great grief is something that takes a while to process, and you, and, and you never get over it. You just learn to live with it. You, you, you must be thinking about her quite a lot, I would have thought, at the moment. Yes, I, know you're, I do. You're going back to Los Angeles for... A, it's more of a celebration than a memorial, it's is that right? a celebration, yes. Uh, that's what she wanted. She planned to have uh, 100 of her friends come to her house and celebrate and have a big party. She loved giving parties. She gave great parties. She was a great hostess. People loved her. I've never seen such an outpouring of love and attention when, when she passed away, which was only five weeks ago, six weeks ago. Um, I mean, it was headlines. She got 
the cover of People magazine in New York, which is uh, America. Well, for an author, that's remarkable. It's, uh, well, I've never heard of anybody yeah. getting that, uh, an author. I mean, if Charles Dickens had died, maybe, you know, well, of course he had. Um. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, the lovely thing is, I know how close you were, again, because there's some periods where you had been estranged somewhat. No, we weren't estranged. We just weren't as close as we used to be. I was going out with somebody who she loathed, and he didn't like her very much, and so we just sort of didn't spend a lot of time together. Yeah. But this happens. But, I mean, I was looking through my uh, papers and things the other day, going through drawers, and I found this scrapbook that she made for me when she was about 11 or 12, and I had just started in the business. I was 17. She'd made the scrapbook, and she had cut out and pasted every single press clipping from that two-year period, and she pays it, and she's written, you know, sort of Sheffield News, uh, June the 2nd, and um, in her handwriting, and I, I found this, and I'm going to take it and show it to her daughters. That's a lovely mm. thing. Well, so. we were very close. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, of course, as I said, she was famous <laughs> for being an author and being such a huge successful author. You have written many books, of course, and the reason why Jones with us this evening is she has her sixth book out here, uh, The Saint Tropez yep. Lonely Hearts Club. Joan Collins, yes. describe the book to people. Well, basically, it's a book. It's set in Saint Tropez. It's set in a, the three-month period of the the height of the uh, the season. The characters are very eccentric and, and very uh, unusual. There's a wonderful gigolo who I love um, <laughs> in the book. <laughs> there's there's some saucy scenes in here as well. Yes, mm. of course, absolutely. Do Why you, not? Do you enjoy writing the sex scenes? Uh, yes, I do. I use my um, extensive experience and imagination. <laughs> <laughs> Nick and Noah set her gently down onto the silken bed. Oh, God. <laughs> His lips travelled to her breasts. Oh, stop! Which he freed from her simple blouse. Carlotta started to respond. His lips were so soft and warm. <laughs> as he... No. Make... <laughs> Her nipples. Did I write that? <laughs> Somehow... Hold on. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was lost in it there for a minute. <laughs> Uh, but it's so fabulous to have you here. I'm so sorry you're doing the show. And, and the great thing is, Dame Joan is going to stay with us for the whole programme, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. So join me as I think it's Dame Joan Collins. <laughs> Still to come on the show, we've got Danny DeVito and Sharon Smith, so don't go anywhere. <laughs> To the Jonathan Ross Show. Let's get my next guest out. He's one of the biggest stars on the planet, figuratively speaking. It is the fabulous Danny DeVito. You come up here. You come up here. All right. Very nice. Danny, it's great to see you. How are you doing? I, I'm really good. So, Danny, I, I see a picture of you in New York last week, and I don't know if this was or what's going on here. You're, you're yeah. out walking a dog. Yeah. The dog's oh. wearing a dress. Isn't that what's, cute? That is very cute. What's going yeah. on there? Well, the, you see, here's the thing. that I was making a movie, but oh. the thing about it was the headline in the, in the, in the article was, uh, if you didn't see the picture, it was kind of confusing because it said... Danny DeVito in New York walking his dog in a dress. That's what I saw. <laughs> so a lot of my friends says, what are you doing wearing a dress? <laughs> Out of the house. <laughs> you usually just wear the dress in the house. <laughs> are you okay back there? I, I'm okay. well. I'm, okay. I'm enjoying like listening to you. No, to no, 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 okay. no. Go ahead. All right. Okay. <laughs> Have you yeah. got dogs, Joan? No, I have grandchildren. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Same thing, right? Yeah. Okay. That's it. That's really good. Uh, they, all, they all shit on the rug, right? Yes. Yeah. yes. <laughs> uh, so, uh, <laughs> no, but you have dogs at home as well. I have, a, I have a, a long hair chihuahua. <laughs> Don't start with me, you guys. Well, there's a picture of your, the beast oh, you yeah. have at home. That's it. That's, that's Zorro. Oh. Zorro. <laughs> 
Yeah, he's a, he's a great dog. He was a rescue dog. You know, he was very tiny when we found him. He was shivering cold under a, under a house. And uh, we looked around for an owner. There was nobody around. He's been with us now five years. Wow. He's a great dog. He just, it took a while for him to warm up to folks. You know, he thought he was going to be taken away or something. I don't know. He was just very terrified. And I have a friend who's from Mexico, and, and he thought he was going to bond with the dog. And he, the dog would not let him near him. He came, every time Leopoldo would come over to the dog, Zora would just growl at him and like snarl at him and say, okay, take it easy. Maybe it's, you know, he is a chihuahua. You are a Mexican. Yeah. You know what I mean? Maybe, maybe he's got some. And then finally, after three or four days, Leopoldo leaves. He, I was in LA. We were all in LA. He calls me from New York. He says, I just arrived in New York, but I realized I finally bonded with Zorro. And I said, why? He said, because he took a shit in my suitcase. <laughs> <laughs> He's a lovely dog, really. <laughs> I know, Danny, I was recently, you know, I was just talking to Joan about uh, Dynasty. Of course, one of the... Dynasty. Di well, we say Dynasty. I know. Here, you we... say Dynasty, I yeah. say Dynasty. Yeah, well, yeah well, I say Dynasty, too. You say Dynasty. Yeah. I say Dynasty, What's dynasty? the Dynasty? This is, uh, they're English. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Can I pass. just remind you that you are both in England right now? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> okay uh, but that was a great period of TV. And, of course, Taxi was, uh, I think, predated that a little bit. What an incredible series Taxi yeah. was. I've been re-watching yeah. some of those fun. recently. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. It was, it was a, a special time in your life, I imagine. Yeah, it was absolutely a beautiful time. I loved it. It was... Uh, Five years, great show. Everybody was really close. A lot of fun. And that was your first big taste of celebrity, of fame on that level? Yes. OK, how did that affect you? What was it like? Were you crazy? Did you do the partying? Did you enjoy oh, I did. it? Like, what, what are you talking about? It was, 19, it was, yeah, it was the early 80s. OK, but what kind of wildness was it? Because Kaufman, Andy Kaufman, who I'm slightly, not obsessed with, but very, oh, yeah. very interested in, as, as most people are, because yeah. of brilliant, unique talent. Yes. Died far too young. He did. Uh, we I, all died far too young. I love that Twins movie. Oh, thank uh, I've you. I've seen it about three times. It was so okay. hysterical. Yeah. Uh, did you ever feel... Well, obviously you did, but Arnold's forearms were unbelievable. I, I presented some awards with him at the Oscars, and I just went like this, and it was like touching a steel bar, yeah. a big yes. steel bar. Amazing. Yes. You saw that? <laughs> yes, I marvel at it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Did you I mean, you're really into steel bars, aren't you? <laughs> 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 okay. You know, uh, one of the big stars of that period as well, another guy who I always think of uh, as being a similar performer in some ways to Kaufman was Robin Williams, of course. Yes. Oh. You were friends with him at that time uh, as well? I was well, I friends, think? yeah, Robin. I, I remember when he started uh, Mork and Mindy. We used to go down. We lived. Well, actually, our show was on tw stage 25. He was on 27. So we'd all go down. We heard about this amazing guy, and he was amazing, an amazing, amazing talent. Um, we very sad that he's gone. And, um, but he was dangerous because Robin was very funny. Once we went swimming, we had, there was a swimming pool at somebody's house, and I was sweltering hot. I just dove in the pool, and I don't swim very well, and he started telling jokes, and he almost killed me in the deep end. <laughs> <laughs> it was a, you know, he's, he's really he was a fantastic guy, and if you want to see him in a great, I did a movie called Death to Smoochie yeah. with him. And he is amazing at it. He plays Rainbow Randolph. He's fantastic. Well, you directed him in that, of course. You directed yes. that. Do you, do, did you prefer directing to acting? I mean, it must be a very it's different kinda, experience. It's kind of a different experience, but I, you know, I enjoy both. I mean, I'm an actor, and, uh, but I like doing uh, you know, the movies. I've, I've done several, and it's a lot of fun. How would you deal with it if you're working with an actor and they're reading a line in a certain way and you think that is not the way that line should be read? <laughs> <laughs> like that. That's how you deal with it. <laughs> Hold on. Did he do it? Yeah. Did he hit you? What the? Don't do it like did you, that. Did you not see how Joan did it? <laughs> There's no actual contact <laughs> needed. Are you hurt? You're the worst actor in the world. <laughs> I paid attention in the green room. Oh. Although I was distracted a bit. Of but can you... With Sheridan, yes. She's coming. Okay. <laughs> From the sound of it, some of the audience is as well. <laughs> Let me ask you about one, another one of uh, performers that was incredible, are you? Uh, in the Tim Burton Batman movie, Batman Returns. Yes. Uh, about 1992, I know uh, we're getting into the dates here. Oh, wow. What an incredible performance oh, okay. it's been. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. And I'm not... Uh, tell you, uh, 
I love I love doing it. Tim is a great director, and it was a really a great experience. I did have a close encounter one uh, on one day. There was a, I don't know if you remember the scene. This was one of my favorite days because I just like there's a scene in the in the movie where a, a monkey brings the penguin a note from Batman. So he clump, he climbs down these. There's a long staircase built in the set, and Tim. I'm uh, in costume with the, all the, you know, every all the fat suit and the this and the that and the, the hat, hands. this whole thing. And he says, come and watch the monkey because the trainer is doing the thing with the monkey. So the trainer, one guy is down at the bottom and he and the other guy's way at the top. And the, the guy at the top says, OK, and, they, and I'm watching Tim says, watch the way he does it, because I want you to be the guy at the bottom taking the note from the monkey. So I say, OK, watch the thing. And. The trainer gives the monkey the note. They make some kind of sound. The monkey comes down the steps, looks around, hands the trainer the note. Fine. They did it twice. I said, okay, I can do that. So now I go to do it. We cameras are rolling. I'm over it now. You see, I'm in this in the character. I got drool come. I've got black drool coming out of my mouth. You know, <laughs> and I'm going. <laughs> up at the monkey and the monkey comes down the steps with the note everything's going great and he leaps at my balls <laughs> and, and latches on thank god i had the the suit you know the big it was all full of like these little i don't know padded beads things i don't know what they made it out of the, the guy had to rip the monkey off of my crotch <laughs> it was really horrifying <laughs> <laughs> He's dead. And I'm going, holy shit, this is curtains. And luckily, you know, I had the suit on. And uh, But when I took it off, there was a chunk taken out of that suit. Wow. Man, I would be like, you know, talking like this right now. Why? So the monkey did that because he hadn't seen I think you? He, sca he was scared. He was, he was scared. Beautiful monkey. Scared I or... took the monkey home. <laughs> Well, beautiful okay. monkey. Really now, nice. Danny's in town, ladies and gentlemen, and this is a lovely thing. Danny's in town uh, because he's involved in a charity called Serious Fun. Uh, it's a charity in honour of, partly founded by, I believe, Paul Newman. Or That's right. Like that. Paul Newman. Uh, big yeah. charity gala here in town. Tell me about this charity, because well, it's a lovely um, thing. The, the idea is... Uh, I, I got involved with it uh, a, a few years ago. Paul... Uh, Paul was really giving. He was a guy who cared about kids and cared about their well-being and this camp is uh, basically all for kids who are born with major physical disabilities they were born with like things like half a heart or somebody this part of them doesn't grow or there's immune deficiencies there's lots of cancer there's all kinds of stuff Paul's idea was that these kids should have a chance to be children instead of patients, because from the time they're born, they and their parents go through this horrendous daily, weekly, whatever it is, medicines, needles, uh, tests, operations. So he started this serious fun camp. He started as, it was called the pain, it was the hole in the wall, mm -hmm. which was taken from the Butch Cassidy and Sundance Kid stuff, and then it became the Painted Turtle, and now it's called the Serious Fun Camps. And every year, Thousands of kids all over the world go free of charge to a camp in the summer, and they get to do things like zip line and, and uh, ride on, you know, uh, swim and walk in the woods and do all kinds of camping things. And they learn, uh, and they sing, and they they perform, and they and they get to live a, a really great three months of their life because the rest of it is pretty pretty, pretty tough. And it's also for the parents, too, the parents. And it's free of charge. Nobody pays anything. They go. We pay for it with our generosity to this organization. Well, it's, it's, a, it's a blessing to be able to do it. That's a lovely thing. Mm. Uh, yeah. Thank you. A really lovely thing. Um, Speaking of kids, you've been working with some of uh, some kids from the UK here. You've been working with One Direction, oh, I believe, yeah. recently. Now, you haven't taken over from Zayn, or have you? Is that what's going on there? <laughs> no, I, they asked me to join the band, but I figured, well, you know, <laughs> listen, uh, all these 19-year-olds and a 
70-year-old crazy man? No, you don't want to do that. <laughs> so it, it was a lot of fun. I had a great time. It, uh, the, uh, the boys are, as they're called, they're very, very spirited and fun. And we did a troll foot picture together, if you want to. Danny yeah. likes to get his foot out, ladies and gentlemen. We already did this. We had your foot out yeah. before last time you were on. You, I have, one, you have a picture uh, of yeah. it? Did you yeah. do one early on? Did, I did, did it in the green room, yeah. I did it with the folks in the green room. This is just where you have the foot in. Take the foot out and stick <laughs> it in front of the camera yeah. and shoot it. I, I, tweet, I tweet it. So you can go on, uh, look at, look, follow me on Twitter. <laughs> I didn't know what to say. You know, people said, you got to go on Twitter. I said, what am I going to say? My first tweet was, my balls are on fire. Wow. <laughs> Uh, and, and, that, and that was your first tweet as well, wasn't yes, it? Of course. <laughs> but I didn't know, you know, how are you going to keep all that up? You know, so I started tweeting my foot. And uh, there's thousands of pictures of my feet out. On my yeah. One foot, right foot, tw troll foot. Only the right foot? Only the right foot. Is there, is there something wrong with the left foot or you just... No. This is the act-up foot. This foot, really, you can't control. And, boy, you're cruising for a bruising. It's a good thing you're not standing in front of me, because I plan it. Uh, Danny's going to stay with us, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to say, join me, same thank you to Mr. Danny DeVito. Thank you. John College is here. Still to come, we've got Sheridan Smith. Don't go away, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get my next guest out. She won a BAFTA for her fine performance in Mrs. Biggs. She's nominated for an Emmy for the wonderful Scylla, and she stormed the stage with two Olivia Awards. Ladies and gentlemen, she's one of the hottest actors around right now. It is Sheridan Smith. <laughs> Yeah. Nice to see you. <laughs> now, were you feeding him grapes or was he feeding you grapes back I, there? What was I going? fed him grapes, he gave me a banana. Wow. <laughs> and you're a fan okay. of the troll foot phenomenon? Massive fan. Well, I follow you on Twitter, well, obviously. Um, but yeah, Danny's foot is my, um, is my massive. And I just got a picture backstage with what? it. With the foot? With yes. the foot. Not with Danny. No, with no. hashtag troll foot. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> it's got a career of its own almost. <laughs> Uh, well, Sheridan, hey, it's great to have you back on because you came on a while ago and you were doing great and everyone was talking about you, but your career has gone through the roof since last time you were on the oh, programme. I mean, it's, it's been amazing. Mrs Biggs was phenomenal. Scylla was incredible, wasn't it? <laughs> what, a, what, a, what a wonderful piece of work that was. Um, has, that, has it felt that way to you? Has it felt like things have changed around you? Um, I don't know. I just keep kind of... Uh, it's work, isn't it? You know, you keep working and just grateful to keep getting jobs, I guess. But Scylla was like a real kind of turning point. And to play Scylla Black, I mean, what a legend she was. And, uh, yeah, it was a real honour. So when they came to you, did they come to you because they knew you could sing or did they ask you whether you could sing if you were to play? I mean, did, how did that all work out? Well, it was Jeff Pope who wrote Mrs Biggs uh, and the same team as that. They, they, they kind of came up with the idea a long time ago. Then I went for dinner with Scylla. And that was amazing. I kind of didn't know what to do. I was dropping all my cutlery, using the wrong cutlery and yeah. everything, and panicking. But um, I did a lot of research, and, uh, yeah, they sent me to singing lessons, and then we sung it all live. Yeah. It was all kind of um, recorded live. So when you met with Scylla, did you already have the part, or was that part of the process? Did she have to OK the person who was going to play her? I think they went to her with the idea, and thankfully she said yes. So, um, yeah, there was no kind of audition process. But um, she was wonderful. She was wonderful to meet, and I did a lot of research, asked her a lot of questions, and she was always there. She said I could ring her at any time, but you can't ring Philip Black, you know? No. I was like, oh, God, she's an icon to me, so... It must have been strange for you knowing that you were singing in her voice and she would then be listening to you singing. Did she... What did she say? about the... Because the, everyone was knocked out by the, by the singing, because it is... Aww. That was, a, I would have thought, a real Aww. challenging part of what you did. Thank you. Yeah. Um, well, I, I mean, I was petrified, because, I mean, it's still a black, you know. There's only one Scylla, and her voice was so distinctive. So, I mean, there was a big thing. Me and the director had a big conversation about, you know, I'm not an impersonator, so I didn't want to do... You know, the typical, everyone does an impression of Scylla, yeah. don't they? You, you do the full, oh, that lower, lower laugh. All you know, right, that, you know. Yeah. Um, but, no, I didn't do that. Yeah. Uh, so I, we just did, like, a little little mannerisms. I watched loads of her stuff for three months, all the um, footage from the 60s of her, and just took little mannerisms, but that's really kind of me to say. But, yeah, there's only one Scylla. Do oh, you find yeah. yourself ever sort of slipping into it accidentally, doing a bit of Scylla at home? Or... <laughs> 
Only when I get the teeth in. <laughs> because you were, you were wearing her teeth. Well, not her teeth, no. but you were wearing... <laughs> facsimile of her teeth. Yes, and, but she was a real great sport about that. She kind of said, how do you sing with those in? You, know, um, <laughs> yeah. you could have asked her the same question, of course. <laughs> <laughs> of course I wouldn't have done it No, um, but yeah, she was so supportive about it. So, yeah, yeah what an honour. And then, obviously, with all the... You know, now that it, everything that's happened, it's even more kind of heartbreaking. Of course. Yeah. It's so sad. Uh, let's remind ourselves of Sheridan and Stella, because this was a, a phenomenal success. Uh, you, you know, this is... Just to remind you, this is Sheridan as Stella in Stella. You know, one of the things that struck me, though, there were similarities <laughs> with, with you and Stella, if I may presume, because <laughs> she struck me as someone who knew she was talented, knew she had a certain level of fame and recognition, knew she had an audience that adored her. You, you are similar as well. You must know you have great talent, and I'm sure you must enjoy a success, but you seem so down to earth. You seem so kind of in touch with who you were and, and who you are all the time. Do you have people who help keep you grounded? Are you just someone who... That's just you, naturally? Well, yeah, my family are like, you know, we're from a little village outside Doncaster. And... Hey! Hey! Come on! You're oh. the only other person I know from yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we stick together. Uh, so, anyway, yes, I'm from there, and it's kind of the place, and my family have always, they say they've dragged me up right. That's what they say. Um, but they, they've, you know, they're a country and western duo, and, you know, we know their airs and graces, and if I ever went home to the village with any kind of attitude, I'd soon be slapped straight back down. Yeah, yeah. There was one time, actually, and when I first started acting and I'd just done The Royal Family, this is not all my village, by the way, they're lovely, and I love you all, thank you for all your support. <laughs> but one person, <laughs> I went back and I'd just done The Royal Family and I walked into the local pub and I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, all right. And they said, um, oh, yeah, we saw you on The Royal Family. I don't know if I can say this, actually, because it's got a swear word. You well, I tell you what, Danny could do the swear word for you if you want. What do you want to say? When I say, when I say, let them, you say, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> when, when I say, fat It might be a word Danny's never heard before, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> okay, so, so Danny, you're going to help out in this anecdote, will <laughs> Just to help so my mum doesn't see me swear. Oh, oh, your mum know. must know you. Yeah, she does, I know, but I'm 34. Come on, grow up. Um, but, yeah, anyway, so I walked in the pub, mm -hmm. and I said, oh, they said, oh, we saw you in the royal family. I said, oh, yeah, but what did you think? You know, a bit cocky. He went, bye, you off. didn't look a fat little... Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> 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 he said it, not me, Mum. <laughs> Oh, you look a fat little fuck. Y yeah, thank you, Danny. Oh, yes, Danny. I did. <laughs> <laughs> and what did you did you see Sheridan's performance, Joan? Oh, it was a phenomenal. It was phenomenal because I know Scylla so well, and I've known her for like twenty five years. I couldn't believe the singing, particularly was. And I said to Percy, I said, "That's they dubbed Scylla's voice, haven't they?" And he said, "No, that is Sheridan singing." I said, "Are you sure?" He said, "Yes." It really, well, you've got to see this. Thank you it, so much. It's Danny. You really have. It's a, it's. <laughs> <fine. laughs> We'll get you a DVD, Danny. We'll get you a DVD. Thank you so much. No, it's true. But, but Danny, you played uh, in Man in the Moon. You played a, a real life character, didn't you? You brought George Shapiro to life, didn't you? Yes, I, I, I played uh, George Shapiro, but it, it was a lot different because uh, <clears throat> George can't sing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I was very fortunate that I didn't have to sing. <laughs> You, you handled that side of it especially well. It was great. Yeah. It was great. It was Thanks, really Danny. wonderful. Did you miss me well? I did. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. so I you had a lot of fun in the dream room. Green room. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's happening tonight? Uh, <laughs> uh, okay, Sheridan, let's talk a yeah, bit about you because you've been nominated uh, for an Emmy 
for that yeah. performance, which right. is exciting. So you'll go out, are you going out to the ceremony? It's New York, I believe. Um, it is in New York, and uh, but I'll be on stage doing Funny Girl oh, in right. London Bridge, so oh. I can't go. But it's so still, you can't go you know, to it? No, no, they won't let you go? No, oh. no, I'm on stage. But it's lovely to be nominated. But the writer's going, he's got more faith in me than I have. Oh, I said don't bother. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's just nice. Well, let's talk about your private life a little bit. Yeah, go for okay, it. Okay, okay. Now, am mm. I right in thinking that this seems... I know how hard you're working, I'm assuming it's the fact that you're still single, is that right? Who's <laughs> <laughs> <It was> asking? <laughs> well, judging by the green room earlier on, Danny DeVito is. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> do you know what? I've read so much stuff, and do you know, it's kind of... I don't really know what the obsession is, but I've read, I've read so much... So many lies, actually, about me dating this person and that person. Every gay friend of mine I've been out with has been my new mystery man. The best one was I stepped out for a dinner date with my mystery man. It was my brother. <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm from a little village, but, like, you know, it'd be me and you next. <laughs> or me and Danny, for sure. We'll be in the papers well, Or we can make a night of it with the three of us, if you want. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I mean, just going out to dinner. <laughs> But uh, the reason I ask, though, isn't just to pry, but it's because I guess it must be tough, because you're right, there is this interest in you and there's this uh, uh, fascination and the newspapers will write whenever they see anything. Weird. So that must make it tough on you, I guess, to, to take that chance and to go out with someone the first time. It is, really. You don't really get a chance to meet people. I mean, I know I'm always working, I'm a workaholic, and I live on my own with my three dogs. <laughs> Sounds really sad and Bridget Jonesy, doesn't it? <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, I just meet people kind of on. Jo oh, there's my dogs! Oh, oh, look at them. Oh, That's Enid, Trish, and Barry Manilow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so they're my babies. I don't need a man with them. So, uh, so you work a lot. So you, I guess you don't meet people outside of the, the immediate circle of people no, you work with. Not on. really, no. But you don't. You wouldn't want to meet someone via like Twitter or something like that, or would you? Would you do that? Or <laughs> what are you get? No, no, I'm not, getting, I'm not getting anything. I just wonder whether, because I know people do. That's how these days it's no, like. No, they do. You know, what's that one? It's not Grindr. Oh, that's right. uh, no, Tinder. That's Tinder. Grindr's the gay one, Tinder's the straight yeah. one. Mm. Oh, it's quite, yeah, Grindr's the, yeah. No, yeah, Tinder's the one where you swipe left or right. Yeah, yeah. No, you can't go on that, though, can you? You couldn't do that. I would like to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, I'm going to get in so much trouble for this interview. Um, no, no, I wouldn't. No, I'd, yeah, no. Uh, I don't know what to say. <laughs> I'm quite embarrassed. Um, but, yeah, no, that's it. OK. <laughs> well, let's talk about Funny Girl, then, because that's uh, what you've got coming up next. Now, many of you remember, and I'm a huge fan, you remember the Barbara Streisand movie, Funny Girl, of course, yeah. Yeah. where she that's played real-life performer Fanny Bryce. You're doing this now here at the Chocolate Factory in London, and then it's going into the West End. Is that, is that right? Yeah, well, we were so fortunate that people, I don't know if it was through Twitter or whatever it was, but um, it sold out in an hour and a half. Wow. Uh, so we've uh, moved to the... Uh, Savoy Theatre in April. You must know a lot of it is down to you being in it. Well, I think also it hasn't been revived since 1966, so no one's done it since Barbara Streisand did yeah. it, which is terrifying. <laughs> Once, yeah, that <laughs> must be really intimidating. Of course it is. I mean, what we're doing is like a completely different version of it and putting like, you've just got to put your own stamp on it, I guess, yeah, haven't yeah. you? Because obviously there's only one Babs and I certainly can't sing like her. Um, so we're doing our own thing, which is going to be great. I mean, it's, it's a dream part to play, so... But you're ready. Are you feeling ready? I'm really excited. I'm really excited. And the fact that people have been so supportive and got behind the show, and hopefully people will come to the Savoy. And it's, just, it's so much fun to be back in the theatre. I just I don't think you can beat that. I mean, it's got a few songs in it, but there's the one big song, isn't there? There's the one big song she does, Don't Tell Me... You know, I'm, the... Yeah. Go on, do do a bit for me. Well, no, because... <laughs> I think if there's the choice that people have of hearing a version of that done right now, I'd be fourth on the list. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, that's, that's going to be the moment people are waiting for. I mean, that's the kind of to be or not to be moment in it, really, I guess. That's the, the, the litmus test. Absolutely. No, you're right. It is the song that everyone knows. And it is, it's, a, it's a brilliant moment in the show, actually. It kind of gives me goosebumps when it gets to it. Yeah. It always makes me laugh in musicals when they suddenly go, no, don't, 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 you can't do it, don't. And I go, don't tell me not. It just makes me laugh oh. and you burst into song all of a sudden. I it's love like, that It's camp line. and brilliant yeah. and I love Give me it. a tiny bit more. Give me two lines. No. Come on, do it to me. No, I've got to Oh, come no, on. No, I can't. No, I can't. I can't. No, will you do it with me? So, here we go. Don't tell me not to... I'm not singing it on my own. <laughs> <laughs> don't tell me not to live, just sit and putter. Life's candy and the sun's a bar the bar. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Come on, that's a special exclusive preview. Oh, yeah. oh, oh it's it's great. Great. You're so embarrassed. I can't believe you made me do that. Uh, we're going to go to a break, but ladies and gentlemen, will you join me in saying thank you to Miss Sheridan oh, Smith? Thank you. you guys are going to stick around for the last part of the show. Uh, Dan
Danny and Jan will still be after the break. Don't go away. <laughs> Welcome back uh, to the Donovan Ross Show. The John Collins, Danny DeVito and Sheridan Smith, ladies and gentlemen. OK, you guys are getting on great. Hey, Sheridan, let me ask you this, and I believe this is true. You have uh, some tattoos, I believe. No, Mum, I don't. I can tell. <laughs> no, Hold I it. haven't got any. I thought, yeah, when well, you've got one, Mom I can see know. one. Mum doesn't know I've got oh. one. Your Mum doesn't know you've got tattoos. She knows I've got that one. OK. Oh, see that. So she knows one. So how many are no, there? Nice. We promised not to tell her. How many more have you got that you haven't told her about She's yet? She's got four more. <laughs> <laughs> have haven't, you... Mom, I haven't, I promise. Who's she for? Still scared of my mum. Why would you not tell your mum you have a tattoo? Because she hates them. Oh. She thinks they're vulgar. Well, you know, She's bald right. Jones the big. <laughs> Yes, you you don't. don't. Like Have you never been tempted by a tattoo? Never. I hate pain. Yes. Uh, OK. <laughs> Let's go back to Funny Gut. Uh, the accent, how's that on stage? Because you were saying silly, you didn't want to do an out-and-out -out impersonation. You've dipped into silly a little bit and done it brilliantly. Uh, have you got the New York accent nailed yet? Um, I've been trying... I said to you, you could help me with the New York. I've got to talk like that, you know? Oh, yeah. Is that all right or not? Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> I'll show you a little bit later. <laughs> Where's... <laughs> When you do it, where's, uh, where's Fanny from? Where is she meant to be from? Well, she's from Brooklyn. Brooklyn is a distinct accent. My father was from Brooklyn. Danny, your uh -huh. American accent is great. Really? My great. Great. Well, really you've great. nailed it. Thank you. <laughs> he has nailed it. I try hard. Do you do accents? I haven't heard you do. I don't think I've Me? seen you play. Do you do... I have don't you... do accents. Could you... Have you ever played an Englishman on screen? No. no. I mean, <laughs> no. Sounds like Dick Van Dyke. Oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> I guess it is just practice, isn't it? It's like anything. Are you good at accents? I'm brilliant at accents. Just any accent you want. Uh, okay, shout them out. Indian. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. <laughs> I was educated at Oxford. <laughs> Don't get me into trouble. <laughs> OK. So the ones you struggle with, I believe, am I right thinking yes. you struggle with Geordie? Why, eh? No, I can't really do it. No. <laughs> I think it's Cheryl Cole. <laughs> I can't do it. It's terrible. That no, was I... more Ant and Deck with Cheryl Cole. <laughs> uh, and what about Irish? You can't do either, is that what? Are you Irish? No, I'm not very good at that. No, that wasn't bad. Was it not bad? For Geordie, it wasn't bad. <laughs> <laughs> but it's weird, cos Geordie, I believe Joan Collins does an amazing oh, Geordie accent. <laughs> Geordie? Yeah, I hear you do a good Geordie. Oh, hi. That's a bad shit. I think we'd like to apologise to anyone who's watching who is either Geordie, Scottish, oh, no. Indian, Irish... Sorry. America. On Twitter, yeah. he's going to get Twitter trolls out yeah, yeah. saying we've all been insulted. I've insulted no one. You've done all the insulting. I'm fine. <laughs> <aren't I? laughs> Thanks to all my guests tonight: Sheridan Smith, Dane John Collins, and Danny DeVito. Uh, next week here on the show, we've got an exciting exclusive as Cristiano Ronaldo joins me for his first ever British chat show. David Tennant will be here, and I'll be joined by Agnes Dean as well. So hopefully, we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching, everyone. Good night. <laughs> Looking ahead to tomorrow night, can he get to the bottom of his genetic history? New Jekyll and Hyde at 7. Fleur East and CeeLo Green. The X Factor results live at 8. And at 9, is this the end? The final extended instalment of Downton Abbey. You won't want to miss it. Next night, it's the ITV News.